We have seen over the last week, Mr Speaker, this unworkable, shameful and desperate attempt to distract from the Prime Minister's law-breaking that the Home Secretary should not go along with because she is undermining not just respect for the rule of law but also her office by providing cover for him. The policies that she has announced today are unworkable, unethical and extortionate in the cost for the British taxpayer. There is no information from the Home Secretary about the costs today. Will she admit that the £120 million she has announced does not pay for a single person to be transferred? She has not actually got an agreement on the price for each person. In fact, the £120 million is the eye-watering price the Home Office is paying just for a press release. So what's the rest of the cost? What is the year's, this year's budget? How many people will it cover? The Home Office has briefed it might be £30,000 per person to cover up to three months' accommodation, but that is already three times more than the ordinary cost of dealing with an asylum case in the UK, and her statement says she's going to provide five years of cost. Well, in Australia, Offshoring costs £1.7 million per person. per person. That is over 100 times more than the ordinary asylum cost from here. So where is all the money going to come from in order to fund this plan? The only, she says she's going to save money on hotels, but the only reason we're paying a fortune in hotel costs is because the Home Office decision-making has totally collapsed. On her watch, Home Office are only taking 14,000 initial asylum decisions a year. That is half what they were doing five years ago, half, taking fewer decisions than Belgium, Netherlands, Austria, never mind France and Germany. So the cost to the UK taxpayer have soared by hundreds of millions of pounds because she is not capable of taking the basic asylum decisions. And because she is not capable of taking those decisions, she is trying to pay Rwanda to take those decisions instead. Whether people are refugees or not, whether they are victims of modern slavery or not, whether they have family in the UK, whether they have come from Afghanistan, Syria or even Ukraine, she is asking them to do the job that she is not capable of. She says it will deter boats and traffickers, but the Permanent Secretary says otherwise. He says there is no evidence of a deterrent effect, and there has been a total failure to crack down on criminal gangs that are at the heart of this problem. The prosecutions for human trafficking, for non-sexual exploitation, are down from 59 in 2015 to just two in 2020. Just two. Well, the criminals won't be deterred because someone they exploited was sent to Rwanda. They don't give money back guarantees, which means they lose money if their victims end up somewhere else instead. They will just spin more lies, and she is totally failing to crack down on those criminal gangs. So why not get on with her basic job instead? Properly crack down on human traffickers do the serious work with France and Belgium to prevent the boats setting off instead. She did not even mention in this statement and make decisions fast. The Home Secretary is just using this policy to distract from years of failure. She promised three years ago to halve the number of crossings, and instead they have increased tenfold. And this will make it worse for trafficking. The top police chief and modern slavery commissioner has said her legislation will make it harder to prosecute traffickers. When Israel tried paying Rwanda to take refugees and asylum seekers a few years ago, independent reports showed it increased people smuggling and increased the action of the criminal gangs. And that is the damage she is doing. She is making it easier for the criminal gangs and harder for those who need support. At a time when people across our country have come forward to help those who are fleeing Ukraine, to help desperate refugees, instead of working properly with other countries, the Home Secretary is doing the opposite. All she is doing is making it easier for the criminal gangs. So will she tell us the facts, the real costs of this policy, the real damage it's going to do to human trafficking and people smugglers, and come clean with the public and come clean with the House? Theresa May. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I say with respect to my right honourable friend that from what I have heard and seen so far of this policy, I do not support the removal to Rwanda policy on the grounds of legality, practicality and efficacy. But I want to ask her about one very specific issue. I understand that those who will be removed will only be young men, that families will not be... uh, Well, the Home Secretary is shaking her head, so I've obviously misunderstood the policy in that sense. But if it is the case that families will not be broken up, and the Home Secretary is nodding, does she not believe, and where is her evidence, 
that this will not simply lead to an increase in the trafficking of women and children. 